everybody. Welcome back to the show that never ends. We're here. Uh, I got Josh. I got Brent. They got me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm available for this episode. Yay! <laughs> do, do that. Do your um, crank anchors. Yay, Andy. Yay! I'm going to Yay. Hawaii. Yay! <laughs> you got mail. I got mail. Uh, you got mail. My life. I got as mail. These guys, as these guys know, my life is just chaotic right now with a move and packing and a lot of stuff. But hopefully, you that are are watching this, um, there's my first on Brent. Keep count for me, would you? I'm mm. going to Hawaii. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We're not very politically correct. You you all know that by now. We're not politically correct, and we don't... Batman? At at least we're having fun. But hopefully, those of you who are watching these in order, you just finished watching the the second part of the Eric Levy interview, which I wasn't part of the intro, but man, what a... I'm still talking to people at work about this, how much fun that was, and I want to say that I'm friends with Eric. I know I'm not, but I like to tell people I am, because he's such a cool dude, and... um, it was Eric yeah. Levy Part Two: The Keyboard's Attack. Yeah, just a little Star Wars crawl I put on it. It's yeah, it's just it was so much fun, and um, I, I you know I've I've been rewatching it myself. So hopefully, uh, people have been watching it and commenting and telling us how cool we are because we got to talk to Eric. Well, I know so, I know Brent has been laying on his couch, thinking. <laughs> yeah, here think, we go. He's thinking of his reha- friend Eric. Rehashing shit. <laughs> Telling you what, folks. Let's keep it R-rated at least. Yeah. Um, so the that's... tables are going to turn, big, <laughs> big boy, little boy. That's, that's our intro. It's not fancy this week. Um, this is a little hurried from my end. I'm a, I'm I'm the most unprepared for tonight's show. Um, but I like my shirt. I want to show it off there. Brent knows I got to meet the band wearing the shirt, so it made Kelly laugh at the time. So, this is my Night Ranger connection to the show tonight. Yeah, all, all of my clothes are packed away. Um, you guys, any thoughts? Anything on the, the last week's episode? The, the whole Eric Levy interview. Anything you want to wrap up about that before we move into today's episode? I just want to add. Today, when I watched it, I loved seeing the light bulb of my head go off for comfort me instead of come <laughs> f me. I mean, I, I just could not believe one i never made the connection it, it's yeah. it's night ranger they're a safe group yeah. the, the, the double entendre stuff is it's still safe yeah like when you were saying don't let up blah 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 yeah but i i just and i and then, and then when i thought oh my god my daughter sings in the car with me <laughs> we love that song you know oh so I, I had to tell her i was like oh my god you don't know what you don't cover me really means <laughs> with that sick dad Thank you. And scene. Yeah. But yeah, jo- that was that was a beauty. Josh, BDA. what about you? Any uh, final thoughts? Well, no. I mean, it was just a great interview. I still appreciate him being on there with us. Definitely a milestone for our uh, podcast to do that. Absolutely. Definitely a great one-two punch having Greg Eckler than Eric Levy. It's almost like bookends. You know, beginning of a career, the you know, towards the end of a career with Eric. So hopefully we, well, you know, the Night Ranger, everything going with it. Um, So, yeah, just I can't thank him enough for being, you know, so considerate to be on here with us. Yeah. And hopefully we have him on here again. Yeah, I agree. I, I hope. I didn't want our conversation to end with Eric. I think if you, those of you who watched all the way through, you can tell we just didn't want to stop talking to him. And when he's, when he's playing the songs, like, I mean, I'm sure you saw, I, I couldn't control my emotions, my, my joy for that. I mean, that's a dream for it. There's a 12 year old version of me going, Holy shit. You know? Yeah, it was yeah. great. And, and I think it would be really fun to have him back on a different, in a different capacity. Now that we've already went through his career and what have you, whether it's just to be part of the show on a discussion, what I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's a homework assignment for all you out there to figure out. Tell us what to have Eric do on the show. And then I we did, have to beg him to come back. I did have a I thought of a, a question I wish I'd asked him at the time. Um, and I don't know if it would have been. I don't want to say appropriate or not, but just 
we've talked, the three of us have talked off off recording about lost or unreleased tracks from Night yeah. Ranger. And I always thought it'd be nice to be able to have a guy from the band and go, do you have any or do you just write what you need for the? There has to be throwaway songs, clearly. Yeah, whether it's from Brad or somebody. But do we have copies of those? That's what I want. I want to hear, you know, it, uh, not to jump topics, but like I, I'm a Bon Jovi fan and I've got a handful of unreleased unreleased Bon Jovi songs that were like, well, how did that not make the album? That was a great song. They're and released that, now. But yeah, now everything's been out. But you know, <laughs> well, when, when you had them back in the day. I think one thing is Night Rangers. Night Ranger has never been big in collecting circles. So sure. that's one reason. The other reason is they didn't use a lot of outside writers. Yeah. So a lot of times you need these demos when you are going to an outside writer writing and then taking stuff back and forth. So they didn't use a lot of outside writers. So I think that's one. I mean, kiss, there's tons of demos out there, but it's mainly, it leaks from the other people that they're writing with. Right. When, if I'm Jack blades and I have the demo tape and it's all me, I'm the only one who can really release it. Yeah. Uh, I know that they made demo tapes because that's how they wrote goodbye. Jeff had a tape full of, you know, different licks and stuff. And Jack had it in his car and Jeff's acoustic part for goodbye came up and Jack kind of wrote that while driving, listening to it in his head. So there's tapes out there. It's just, they're so controlled probably by the band members that they don't really get leaked. As for unreleased songs, I'd have to look it up. I do know that they mentioned a song title, I think, for somewhere in California that then never appeared on the album. So either that song exists out there, or maybe they changed, you know, the name of the right. title and it's ended up being something else. Sure, but, comfort uh, me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mad yeah. emotion. Yeah. yeah. Mad emotion. So. so well, anyway, that's the one question that, in hindsight, I wish I just got. You know, we all got a little sidetracked when Eric started playing, and I mean, my list of questions just went out the window. I was like, oh, "You can just play all night. I don't care what we do at this point." That was, that was so inconsiderate of him. Well, Eric, <laughs> oh, man. Eric did did say, I think, in the first interview, that one of the first songs. I think this was the story. One of the first songs that they worked on was a song that didn't make it to the album. Yeah. Uh, it know. sounds familiar if I remember the story. So, but he couldn't remember. I don't think he could remember the song. But I remember him saying that he didn't think that it made it to that album. Yeah, it would be nice if there was, uh, you know, bootlegs and demos and stuff Listen, out there. The holy grail of Night Ranger fandom is the Ranger album and unreleased demos, yeah. <laughs> or unreleased songs. Yeah, that's it. There, there <laughs> is, there is stuff out there. That oh, and, and a big life live tour video. Correct. There's n nothing really available, f you know, out there in collector circles from big life. But uh, there is stuff out there that we will talk about during upcoming episodes when we do album focus that I'll kind of, you know, share. It's stuff that probably you guys may not even know about, but it exists and it's cool to get your hands on. So, but we'll save those for the. Uh, there's a big one for Seven Wishes that I'll bring up. So when we do that episode here in a week or two, I'll bring that you know kind of lost gem up for Seven Wishes. Well, do do you have it? I do, and it's okay. some, it, a tease. and it's something that you know I get asked a lot. Hey, what's your most favorite item or? What's worth the most, and usually, like, if you ask me my favorite item, it's just something sentimental, like my first two Night Ranger records I got when I was a kid, or the all-access pass that Kelly Kiggy gave me personally. Other than that, it's all just stuff. Um, my this, favorite night. Go ahead. This might be if my house was on fire and I grabbed those things. This would be the first thing I would grab, you know, outside the sentimental stuff. Now I'm excited. See, now my favorite Night Ranger item that's sentimental to me is the street. Yeah. The, in the <laughs> avenues. 
And I walked it, into that one, Brent. I was like, and, what's he got? What's he got? I, know, I was watching yeah. your face. <laughs> I've known you forever. I'm like, what's he got, man? Yeah. I've, I've been to his, his, clo- his museum. A uh, <laughs> sentimental street. And the, I own it. In the, ah, ah. the avenues is a section of town yes. in San Francisco. Oh, very nice. I didn't know that. So, but I like that. I thought it was just a play on words. No, he's just talking about sentimental street. The sentimental streets kind of just a play on words, but being you know, lo- being located in the avenues in San Francisco. Yeah. That's an episode we should probably put a pin in down the road, Josh's uh, lyrics, breaking down some of the lyrics and understanding misheard, mm-hmm. misunder- misrepresented lyrics. Mm-hmm. You know, for like, I know mine was tenderloin life for the longest time. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't even mm-hmm. know that was the line, tenderloin life, and Eddie's coming out tonight. Well, tenderloin. Then, tenderloin. They explained it. Oh, they did? Yeah, so, yeah, Jack, yeah. this is what, the, what he says in the shows live, is that the Tenderloin was a bar yes, yes. that they used to hang out in yep. and play in, and there was a guy that used to come mm-hmm. in, Eddie, and when Eddie, again, I'm, I can do my best, yeah. Jack, and, and when Eddie, now when Eddie would come in, you know, Brad would jump up on the on the bar, and he'd kick it over people's beers, and we knew we'd have a good night if Eddie was there tonight. So, Eddie, if you're up there somewhere living that Tenderloin life, this one's for you. I thought tender. I also I Thank also you. thought it was a an, like an area of town too, but again yeah. I'll have to look that up. Uh, uh, but, Frisco, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, listen, I thought the line was a tender long life. No, no. <laughs> so, which makes zero sense. But well, it could be he's eating tenderloin sandwiches down on his luck. Um, so anyway, I think we should put a pin in an episode well, where we break down some of the most yeah. maybe asking people on the page. Well, what's the line you didn't you you think you've heard or misheard? For Brent, maybe. Well, for Emily, I got Emily's right now. What? And can't find me a thrill. Yeah. When when cocaine and women. Yeah. Well, the other night we were having a discussion in the room, and she thought it was cupcakes and women. Oh. Cupcakes yeah, no. and women. They'll treat you the same. Well, they will. Um, well, they do. They add, they add, they add, you. To your, they add to your waistline. Yeah. Well, Brent, when tonight, when you're laying on your couch, yeah, uh, maybe I, think about the line of uh, him wearing his trousers real tight, and see if you can kind of segue that into our. I don't know what you two have going on. I'm I just going <laughs> to sit have back. Nothing and... going on. I, it just you know now all of a sudden I'm the butt of his shit, and I told him I said I said you know you mess with the bull he's going to get the horn. <laughs> No, I'm doing the um, Breakfast Club. Yeah. All right, let's get on. Let's get this out of the gutter and into the uh, into the By streets. Way, Josh, suck it. <laughs> um, I I know we we just have a format that we want to kind of stick with. Uh, there is that. no news that I'm aware of. Echo bats. Still... Go listen well, to no. Echo bats well, again. Listen. The biggest. I'm... I missed out on that conversation. I, that song is a fun song. I got a real kick out of that song, and I agree with what Brent said uh, about being a more sound like a Saigon kick. Um, the fu- it was a fun song, and the man Hardnell can just sing. I I didn't expect that's not the guitar sound I expected to hear from that song. Joel seemed like he was just kind of like who Joel was always just smiling. I mean, that guy's got to be living just the greatest life. Him and Sammy I, Hagar. I kept waiting for someone to come topple the statue behind him. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, I'm like, I hope he didn't film this on a bad day. Yeah. Um, but it's so regarding. The, go ahead. I just say, but, but Night Ranger wise, we don't have anything. The uh, only news that we really never touched on that I actually posted on the page was a Dr. Pepper commercial. Yes. Some people hate it. I find it complimentary because, like I said, it shows the song as a classic. Someone's paying tribute to it. I still haven't seen the entire commercial. I've only seen a clip. Oh, well, you know, I posted it. I, I haven't watched it. My uh, only, obviously. My only complaint would be that they didn't mirror Sister Christian enough. Yes, I agree with that. You know, if you're going to do it, do it all the way. Yeah. yeah. But the good thing is uh, it's a nice little revenue stream for the guys. Sure. When all this, since there's no touring going on, so. Um, well, it keeps them in the. It keeps their name out there. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, whether us as fans know that they have a lot of other songs besides Sister Christian, it's still fun that that song is what thirty six years old. Yeah, somewhere around there. So, yeah, 30, like it's, it's iconic. Period. And yeah. it's still being played, and it's still being not in a in a teasing way. I, I don't see it that way. I think it's being no. played as of a. 
this is a great iconic song of that era. There's no teasing when you're on national TV. So, you know, you only go. teasing on this freaking podcast, uh, right, Josh? Yeah, or you and your couch. That's right, couch boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's no news except for the and Echo Bats. Saigon Kick sounds like Echo Bats. <laughs> Not possible. Saigon it's kick physically the other way, but time travel. No, <laughs> no uh, East, really. Uh, yeah. Hey, Josh, do you know? I, I I think Eric might have addressed this, but I don't recall. Is there going to be a full album, or is they are they just doing songs? I th- do you know, right, Brent? Right, I don't know. Well, you know he, for he, sure. Oh. Right, it's just songs. Uh, they've got one song in the can. They're going to see how this goes, and then they're going to um, possibly do more. Tony wrote the song. Sent it to Joel, and Joel kind of came up with his little riff, and then he got, went ahead and contacted James and Eric, and the rest is Echo Bat history. Yeah, okay, cool. It, it, and it, what I did, because I, I saw an interview with Joel today, and Joel had said that um, Tony told him he was shooting for a queen kind of feel for the song, which I totally think it echoed more Beatles than it did Queen. But I can I can feel the queen in there now that he says it though I can I I, can, I, I mean, kind of maybe killer queen yeah, yeah dun, 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 dun. maybe I, I don't I'm not I, I don't know enough about Queen to to speak intelligently about it so I won't try I hear my life by Saigon Kick that's what I hear when I hear dun, it dun, 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 dun. anyway uh, great tune okay um is there anything as far as fans in motion go, uh, yeah, I, the, got, I got three things all together here. Shout outs, web, uh, Facebook page stuff, anything going on? It's been very active. I love it. Uh, Josh, can you give us a count on members? I know we're knocking on. Probably like 940, 945, somewhere in there. Man. Yeah, it was it's, a slower weekend with the holiday. Yeah, but man, it's really. Yeah, I know. I'm impressed. It's really, it's climbing. It's doing well. People are really jumping on. Yeah. Carrie Ann Sutton posted today, I believe it was, a picture of Jack wearing Kelly's clothes. I thought that was pretty damn Carrie's funny. Carrie's clothes, I think. Carrie or Kelly? What did I say? Oh, you Carrie. Kelly. Carrie Kelly. I couldn't Sorry. remember. I just couldn't remember. I thought it was Carrie, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was pretty damn funny. I, I, I got a kick out of that. So um, that was a cool, a cool post. And then... Um, Ryan Raglan a couple weeks ago shared the Dick Clark on American Bandstand. It was a very good, clean copy from, I guess, Dick Clark Studios. Um, I went back and actually watched that. It was nice to see a clean version of that. And I wanted to make I wanted to make a correction. Um, Brad Clink was the winner of the logo, and I had just announced that and sent it to him the other day. In any, in any event, I had just done a story about a, a guy named Bill that had um, passed away. So when I segued into Brad's, hey, I'm sending you this, Brad, blah, blah, I kept calling him Bill. Ah. So um, 51, things happen, you know. So sorry about that, um, Bill. No, I'm joking. Sorry about that, Brad. I'm glad you liked the logo. Um, it was a treat making it for you. And again, if more of you share this page, more of you are active on this page, if you watch the podcast, especially you got a really good chance on possibly getting a logo. Nice. That's very cool of you, Brent. Yeah, that's the way I hey, we won. I won viewership. I want to rule the world. <laughs> One logo at a time. You want to live that big life. Ooh. I want that tenderloin life. Just a segue. I was rocking the crap out of big life on the way home today. I had it cranked up in my car. And were you smiling? I, I was. I just... Uh, you know why? why? It's a happy album. I... I just sometimes the songs hit you in the right spot. And man, Big Life came on on shuffle, and I was like, "Man, this is a great song." And I just turned. Up and it's I, a happy album, Josh. S- singing to myself. But anyway, after that episode, we even had a review. Somebody said, "You're right, Brent. I never thought about it, but it's a happy album." I mean, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a fun album. I don't want to get off on a tangent. I just wanted to throw out there that I was jamming some Big Life today. So when we put a pin in the Big Life episode, I'm gonna say it's a happy album. So just it's a happy boy. For- it's fun. Hubba hubba. <laughs> uh, is there any, uh, besides the uh, the Echo Bats song that we just talked about, is there anything else new in the that you guys might have and you want to share? 
Well, Thomas, is it, I think it was Thomas Haltbrand, I think is how you pronounce his last name. He mm-hmm. had posted on the page, he had posted his uh, three, the three mothers' armies, three yeah. albums from the. Uh, yeah, I saw that. From the 90s, which Mother's Army is Jeff Watson, obviously from Night Ranger, Joe Lynn Turner from Rainbow, Deep Purple. Um, EVJ. Correct. Bob Daisley uh, from, I think, what, Ozzy back in the day. Uh, and you had Ansley Dunsbar for a while on drums with uh, Journey and tons of others. And you had Carmen Apice from Vanilla Fudge and King Cobra and Paul Stanley solo record. Rod and Stewart. Rod Stewart. I mean, yeah, what, bas- a, what a... Basically, every, he's, I'm, every band, just like Kerry Kelly he's been in so they just released mother's army at least a three disc set that has all three albums on it oh nice so it's available in the u.s you can get on amazon i don't know 20 bucks or so Um, but it does have all three albums so you don't have to get them from japan it is available in the u.s now uh like i said it's three discs has its own individual book so if it's just one of those things you haven't picked up because you know they were pricey in japan this was just released i don't know six months a year ago something like that so you can get all three albums for one price now i'm gonna write that down because i actually do not have those and yeah I think you could I'm only gonna... get them from japan i think that was the only country they were available in am i, am I correct on that josh correct Okay. One, one, they, one of the later ones may have been released in Europe as well, but yeah. they were mainly all released in Japan. And going back to some of our previous conversations, I know we, me and Brent talked about in the last episode, we were talking about record labels. And I was telling you, you know, Geffen and MCA, and they kind of got, you know, all back and forth and stuff. So I, now I probably don't remember. I, I looked into it a little bit to refresh my memory. MCA ends up buying Geffen in the early 90s. So Geffen is now under MCA's umbrella. So then Universal buys, eventually, buys MCA. So now Universal owns MCA, MCA owns Geffen Records. Eventually Universal has Geffen absorb MCA. So now MCA is not around. So those rec- those Japanese records that are released on Geffen, mm-hmm. it's because MCA basically has been dissolved into Geffen. So that's where that falls under. And but Universal owns Geffen. So that's how all that worked Damn. out. So Yeah, you know, there's only what three major labels now. Sony, mm-hmm. Universal, and frontiers, <laughs> you know, yeah. frontiers that's, has all the rock acts, so you that's know, pretty good. Really, there's they, there used to be an abundance of them all, and and generally the death blow to any rock band was to be on A and M, Arista, or MCA, because MCA did country, Arista did a lot of soul and pop rock, and A and M. I, you know, no, and they didn't know what to do with those bands. They just didn't know. So if you were lucky, if you were on CBS, Polygram, or um, Warner Brothers, those were the three big ones back in the 80s. So, A little side note to your uh, Arista. I just watched a really good doc about <clears throat> Clive Davis and his life. And, and that man, he is instrumental in a lot of what we – grew up on Mm -hmm. the the first act he ever signed was Janis Joplin and it just Uh, went from there but that talks about how he got Arista and all that and all that his but it's fascinating if you like documentaries I love documentaries that's a I forget the name of it but it's Clive Davis you can look it up so all right Josh we want to move on to the topic of this episode are you ready for that anything else we need to add at this time I think we're good it's those damn Yankees oh so, Josh, break it down. Why, tell them why we're doing this episode and what this is um, going to entail. 
So we're going to talk about the unreleased recorded third album for Damn Yankees. Full album was recorded, never released. It's one of those. God, I'm just showing the picture. Oh, you can do that now. Go ahead. Um, it's <laughs> God. <laughs> it's uh, sorry. One of those, you know, mysteries that's kind of loomed out there. There's not a lot of information. Stuff, you know, slowly rolls out. People have been talking about it off and on on the page, and it's like, you know what? Let's just do an episode around this lost third album because it's kind of cool to have that in the whole night ranger type history because it gets you know it's this mystery and you know mysteries are good and there's a lot of bands that do have these albums that are out there that have never been released poison crack a smile was recorded and shelved forever kiss carnival of souls was recorded and shelved should have been shelved forever um lover boy had an album like that as well i mean i don't know if you guys remember the great uh Eddie Wilson, but you know, in the '60s, he released a great album, and then recorded a second album called "A Season in Hell," and the album company hated it, and it was shelved for almost 20 years. I, I was trying to keep a straight face, but I couldn't with watching. I can't Andy. express my joy for that reference, Josh. I cannot <laughs> express my absolute joy. And, I love Eddie Wilson, and. And it was great because it brought renewed interest to Eddie and the Cruisers. You had, you know, this album being released, A Season in Hell. They found this demo tape in there that they had no idea who was on. It turned up being it was Bo Diddley. So it was just cool that they had, you know, there's these lost albums that are out there. So that's what we're going to talk about today is really just this lost damn Yankees album and kind of put pieces of the puzzle together let you know what songs have leaked out kind of recorded by other artists um you're still smart. Well, just, you're just smart. i just gotta say that was just it was so beautiful it was it was without even uh, st- um, a strain of consciousness how you just melted that in there and when I heard him, Eddie Wilson, I'm like, he's not going, he's not going there. There's and I'm a, looking at Andy, Andy's dying. That was beautiful. Well, there's, there's two documentary. That was so good. There's two, docu- good there's two documentary, documentary films uh, out yeah. there on this. I mean, one did better than the second one. Well, they're both cult classics now. Um, yeah. But, uh, I can go get my copy of both of them right now. <laughs> for those, I remember, for, I remember when Eddie the Cruisers hit cable for the first time. And it it exploded because that movie had been out six months prior to that and nothing. And then all of a sudden you're hearing Darth Vader's favorite song on the radio on the dark side. We can do an entire episode about Eddie and the Cruisers, man. I mean, lest you forget, (laughs) Salamato almost played his fingers off trying to keep up with the stuff that Eddie's trying to create, man. We're just the Cruisers, man. We're not great. We're nothing. (laughs) If we can't be great, there's no sense of being nothing than anything at all. And Eddie left. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to spit this in my nose if I drink it. I've seen that movie so many times, probably as many times I've seen The Breakfast Club. God, I love that movie. Man, well, I have to go watch it. I, I, I'm done. You guys finish this without me. All right, so Damn Yankees forms in 1989. Tommy Shaw, Ted Nugent, John Claudner gets them together. John Claudner is an A&R guy with Geffen Records at the time. Uh if you look in almost any record, Aerosmith, Foreigner, stuff like that, you'll see John Kladner's name in there, and it's usually in there twice. That was a, you know, their little thing. So John Kladner is in the wedding dress, and dude looks like a lady. He's yes. in he's in probably five or six Aerosmith videos. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, the wedding dress. He's in uh, the other side video from Pump. I know off the top of my head, but uh, he looks like Jesus. So. So John Kladner is fans of Tommy Shaw, Ted Nugent. He's the one that gets them together in 1989 to basically put a project together. Both of their solo careers are kind of at a dead point at this point. So they get a couple guys, I think, from Tommy Shaw's backing band, Michael Cardelloni on drums, and I don't remember the bass player's name. And that was the first lineup, basically, of what would become Damn Yankees. But something wasn't gelling. They they felt like they needed something else. And John Kladner hears that Jack Blades, or Night Rangers, broken up. He calls Jack Blades. 
gets him to come to, I think, New York and rehearse with Tommy Shaw, Ted Nugent, and then Michael Cardloni. So they, they, they debated on adding a drummer. They kept it as it is. It's probably, you know, that's probably as much chefs as you need in the kitchen right there. So you have Damn Yankees Formed, 1990. You have the big album that everybody knows. Yeah. 1992, you have Don't Tread. That tour lasts about two years, all of 93 and then to the first half of 94. Late 94, probably early 95, Ted's recording a solo album. Jack and Tommy do um, Shaw Blades. Shaw Blades is pretty much probably done by you know late summer of 95. That is where Tommy Shaw starts getting a little bit into sticks. Now, Damn Yankees does get together in the fall, maybe early winter of 95. They, they may have recorded some demos, but nothing came of that time period, late 95. Now you go into 96, Tommy Shaw is with Styx. Jack gets, black, gets back with Night Ranger. And you have, you know, Neverland, you have Seven and all that. Going into the fall of 99, Damn Yankees gets signed to Portrait Records, a division of Sony Records, which John Kladner is heading. So you get Jack, Tommy, Ted, and to some degree Michael Cardloni. That's, that's a little bit of a mystery how much he's involved at this time because Michael Cardloni is with Leonard Skinner at this time. So you have this going on in the late late 1999 they're recording but Tommy isn't really involved much you have to remember Styx releases a new album in June of 99 called Brave New World it doesn't do that well Tommy and Dennis DeYoung are clashing basically they boot Dennis DeYoung out of the band and Tommy has just basically taken control of Sticks. So he just take control of Sticks. He needs to put his emphasis and time on Sticks. So he has to basically back out of some of these recordings. You guys into uh, Brother Kane at all? I know them. I don't. I couldn't sing your I mean, song, but I know I know about four I know or the five name. songs. I and just haven't heard them in years. They had three studio albums, all are great. And I want to, before I go any further, I want to let people know that this information that I'm giving out comes from multiple sources. A lot of it comes from Andrew McNeese from Melodic Rock. If you guys go out, find the Melodic Rock website. Big website for the last 20 years, you know, in this genre of music. Some of it comes from different interviews. I know Tommy Shaw talked briefly about it on the Mitch LaFon episode, I don't know, a few weeks back. Sleaze Rock talked to Damon Johnson a few years ago. And then I've just pieced together other interviews and stuff. So I want to make sure I'm giving credit, you know, to, you know, who's originally got some of this information. So, Damn Yankees is together in late 99. They've got a record contract. They're writing these songs and putting it together. Tommy, like I said, Tommy just had just basically has to kind of step aside. So John Klonner the one that's handling all this. He gets demo tapes from Damon Johnson. Now, Damon Johnson is the main guy in Brother Kane. Brother Kane released a great album in 1993. I think it was self-titled. Had two reasonably reasonably big hits, Got No Shame and That Don't Satisfy Me. Those songs got a lot of radio play in 1993 when a lot of rock bands didn't. You know, grunge was okay. real big. I mean, they had a little bit of a kind of a, a Black Crow sound. So 
Okay. A little bit, but they, they, that's how I, you know why they were on the radio. But 1995, they released an album called Seeds. It has a great song, um, "Full Shine On," and that was like number one on the mainstream rock radio. So Damon Johnson has this pedigree hits. He wrote on 1997's uh, Sammy Hagar marching to Mars. Um, I can't remember the name of the song, Sand Hill or something like that, but that's him and Sammy on that song. So John Claudner gets these demo tapes from Damon Johnson, and he, he basically asks Damon, can I give these to Jack Blades? And Damon knew who Jack Blades was and said, yes, that's fine, um, and gives them to Jack Blades. Now, on this Portrait Records, for those that you know are as old as us, it was kind of cool because these bands that we enjoyed were finally getting some decent releases. They it wasn't CMC Records and you know these smaller labels, Cleopatra. This was a respectable record label. So you had Great White, can't get there from here. I don't know if you guys remember that album, but spectacular album released on Portrait. A self-titled Rat album was released. They actually had a, it was supposed to be an all-star band of Jack Blades, Bobby Blotzer, C.C. DeVille, Jack Russell, and um, maybe it was just them. But it was like, there was going to be them four as a all-star band. It never materialized. I don't know if it, you know, turned into Samantha Seven, which was C.C. DeVille's band that Jack produced. But at one time, there was supposed to be an all-star band with Jack Blades on there. Um, Cinderella was actually signed, never recorded. But so Jack gets these demos, calls Damon up, and has him come out to Jack's ranch. So for four to six weeks, they're out there writing, recording demoing putting together these songs out at Jack's ranch so Damon's writing with Ted Jack and Damon are writing together so they're putting together this damn Yankees album I don't know if you guys remember any of that back back then hearing anything yeah I remember them talking about recording a record but and assuring that Night Ranger was not breaking up and what have you hmm well, this is the beginning of, and we'll get into this in some episode where we kind of break down periods of the band. I've always called like 99 to 2008 kind of the lost years because there's really not going on much with Night Ranger. There's a lot of solo albums and other stuff, but Night Ranger, there's one studio album and a ton of compilation albums. So this is really the beginning of that. So they're recording and... You know, Tommy does come back at the end to, of the recording and work on stuff. So they kind of look at it as this is going to be kind of a rotating membership. Like I, like I said earlier, Michael Cardelloni is there for maybe a little bit, but we don't know how long. Kelly Cakey actually becomes a member of Damn Yankees. Um, I remember it being announced that he was coming to the band. Um, so th Kelly has said for at least 10 days, he was there rehearsing with Jack, Ted, Damon, and him. So that would have been that lineup of Damn Yankees. Would have been Jack and Kelly Kagey, Ted Nugent, and Damon Johnson. So he said they mainly rehearsed. They didn't really do any recording. He said they recorded one song, and he sang it. And we'll get into that a little bit. Um, Tommy comes back at the end they put this album together and send it off basically you know to get put together they're working with a producer at this time called Luke Evan I guess he I've, I didn't know much about him until I looked this up younger guy John Kalodner liked him Tommy Shaw ends up having issues with him. Tommy tells the story of writing a song, maybe demoing it, and coming back, and Luke the next day 
has rewritten the lyrics. Oh. And Tommy's like, what do you mean you re, you know, rewritten my <laughs> lyrics? So right there, there's this division between, between Tommy and Luke and the band. So they spend late 99, early 2000, putting this album together. It comes back, and no one was impressed with them. Sony was disappointed in it. John Claudner was disappointed in it. Now, at this time, John Claudner has cancer. So he's a little bit hands-off than what he normally would be. So they get these, and they are not happy with any of this. Um, One thing I do want to talk about a little bit is Luke Evan, the producer. So these mixes come back. The band doesn't like it. They actually give these songs to Kevin Shirley, produce Journey, a lot of the stuff that we like, to basically try and remix it to sound like Damn Yankees. The mix does not sound like Damn Yankees. It sounds modern. Kevin Shirley basically says he can't do it. So now you have this album that no one likes. <laughs> yeah. And what are they going to do with it? And it's kind of crazy. You have a record contract. You could release it, get the money. And they all decide to basically shelve it. So you have an album sitting there, recorded. Not fully produced, but, you know, ready for release. But it's there. And they basically walk away from it. They should have been able to tell how it sounded when they were recording it, though, going back and listening to the tapes and doing overdubs and what have you. Yeah, they should have had an idea of how it was sounding. This And there's... But when you send stuff away to get mixed... Oh, I know. It's totally different. Um, we lost we lost Andy. What happened? Uh, he's coming back. So... Teresa needed him, so... <laughs> or you got a Charlie horse. He, he almost got one the other night again when we were doing... Well, I'll edit this out. I just got to remember where I was at. All the uh, mix. I don't have a counter, so I can't tell you. We don't need it. Oh, never mind. He's here. I just muted the mic. The headphones were not <laughs> muted. Did I you have it. a Charlie horse? Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I'm cramping up, man. I, I just, so All I right. had to go walk for a minute. All right. Yeah. So what you need to do is I, before we record, you need to get some electrolytes. I just didn't want to interrupt you guys. So just like keep I told, going. I told I'll him, I said, you picture. almost had one the last time again, too, you know. So next time before you record, get some Brondo. Oh my God! I, it's getting old. is is not good. Uh, we, we're, we're he's editing all this part, so yeah. Oh, otherwise I, it was going to be an edited free <laughs> episode. Other than yeah, I mean, pictures. I didn't want you to stop, but I want to like I just I I'll step out of the picture real quick. I don't. Would, would you want me to give you a cue or something? <laughs> just go. It's, oh, well, I mean, God, it's like. <laughs> you know what you ought to do, Josh? You ought to put up an intermission thing like the old timey films had. Yeah. You know, the little piano playing. Let's and then all go right to back. the movies, like the hot dogs. <laughs> That's I apologize, man. I All just right. my leg just. And we're back from uh, Andy being an old man. So, mm. what happens is it gets sent out with the mix or to get mixed. It comes back. No one likes it. Record company doesn't like it. Jack doesn't like it. Ted, Tommy, no one likes it. They give it to Kevin Shirley. Basically, try and fix it. He can't. So they basically leave it on the table. Just we're leaving it, which is a big deal. I mean, you have a. A, you know a contract where you can get paid for something and they all agree to mutually leave it there the issue was it sounded too modern they didn't like that so just probably a year year and a half later Luke Evan goes on to work with a band called Bon Jovi and he produces an album called Crush Great album, yeah. and produce which produces the hit, "It's My Life." Yeah, that's and a good song. Basically, side note: that is a great CD front to back. 
and it reinvents. I just remember when I came out, Bon Jovi was all over the place again. Yeah. It's got some really solid songwriting. It really does. It's it's a really standout album. So I guess the issue, the the what you could debate was, was what he, you know, what if they had went in his direction, could damn Yankees have had something similar to Bon Jovi? You so don't. You don't know. Let me jump in for a sec. And I, I, I'm you know, again. I am the least prepared for this episode because I don't know a lot of these songs. But you don't. if they were good songs, you know, a producer can only do so much. You still have to write good songs, and I think we all agree. Jack, we all are big fans of Jack's writing. I, I don't know that in the few songs that I know of, that I've listened to of, the, of that you're going to probably address, they're kind of hit or miss. In my opinion, true. Um, but you could also, I mean, think about crazy. I mean, Brent, you've said it yourself. Go remix Crazy Nights. Yeah, it could change how that album sounds. You could go remix remix Kiss Unmasked, and get a totally cool sound out of some of those songs, like Naked City stuff, like that. So, how you mix and produce something. I'd say you could go mix Seven Wishes and you could have a totally different sounding album just by well, do it, doing the mix. So, well, I guess what I'm getting at, though, is, is from the songwriting point of view, the hook, the, mm-hmm. the, the what pulls you in, you know, Seven Wishes and Goodbye are still going to be those songs. You can change the the tone or the sound, but it's still lyrically, melody are still going to be there. And what I'm suggesting is maybe these songs just didn't have it. That could be it. And I'm not trying to dog but, these guys out. You know, but I don't, fans. I, I, we don't have it. We don't have it to comp- yeah. listen to. I just don't. I just don't know. I mean, it's like you're recording it and you're like, okay, you know, this is good. You're putting it on demo. Okay, yeah, this is definitely one's going to make the album. So there's parts to where you like it enough to. This is going to be the final ten that we record, and then all of a sudden you don't like it. Something it could be a combination of all of this. It comes back. Well, maybe we didn't like these as much, and maybe the mix just comes back. You know, totally I different. Mean, keep in mind, uh, Hole in the Sun was also released. So, well, Hole in the Sun is not. As I'm not saying it's horrible, but you know what I'm saying. There, there's a sound that wasn't quite there on this. Yeah. On this. Uh, well, Neverland uh, doesn't sound like a, a traditional Night Ranger album either, but it was still uh, good. How dare you, sir? No, it doesn't well, have that Night Ranger. It's more cleaner guitars and what we'll have go, you. We'll go to dual, dueling pistols here later tonight. Well, I I'm think not knocking on it. I love that album. Neverland yeah. sounds more similar to the newer albums than it sure. does the classic. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, but, uh, so... But I think that's a good question, you know, you could debate and have fun with is could damn Yankee, you know, Yankees been in that that same, you know, same plane as Bon Jovi when they released It's My Life in 2001. Mm -hmm. That was a huge song. And it's Bon Jovi wasn't I mean, their last few you know albums before that really hadn't done much. No. And that song was everywhere. So. You know, it would be cool to talk to this Luke Eben guy and just get his perspective. And, you know, it'd be kind of a cool what if they had went through with it and could something had happened if they were, you know, you could argue maybe they weren't open minded enough to go that route and they're still stuck in maybe this, you know, other way of looking at music where Bon Jovi was more open and it worked for them. Again, we don't know. This is only stuff that Jack and. Ted and Tommy and all them could answer, but Josh, can I ask real quick? No. What else has Luke Evan done so that we would know? He worked with the Plain White like, Tees. He... Um, hey, I like those guys. Uh, the the Hey Delilah album. He yeah. he worked on some of it. I know he's worked a lot with Richie Sambora solo. Uh, I know he worked some with Elisa Keys. Mm-hmm. I don't know what. Okay. Um, so he's but, got a track record. But yeah, but you know what? He's a couple. I, I, this is just what I've read is like some buddies of his, you know, asked, he dabbled in real estate out in California, Santa Monica, maybe. And he started getting into it. It was really good. He's like the number one realtor in Santa Monica, California. 
to where he probably makes so much money that he kind of gave up the music part. If oh, you're the, I guarantee if, that. If you're the number one realtor in Santa Monica, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that's what he did, you know, after that. But so, yeah, so there's this album sitting there that never has been, you know, released or anything like that. So Andrew McNeese, about a year ago, got his hand on um, some stuff. And I sh- sent him a message about some th- about the Damon Johnson song, but I don't know where he got these pictures from. But this is the picture, and I'll post it up there. It's of the CD that basically they have the mixed compilation. It's unmastered, non-sequenced. But it has a date of June 26 of 2000 on there. Um, and they they were so far along with this that they actually had when you you know how they uh, announced they would announce to record stores you know give them like a list of upcoming releases in the next six months. This was on the release thing for Sony Japan. It had a release date of um, September 13th of 2000. Nice. So it had a release date. Um, Damn Yankees, a... brand new album. They didn't have a, a, a title yet. The title, okay. But it awesome. had... Chinese Democracy on that sheet too. No, nope. <laughs> but it, that it... thing was on the sheets for like two years, you know. But it had. It said it has that release date. It has a price. It has a barcode number. So it had a catalog number. So it was in the works to be released, and they yanked it. You like that? Damn Yankees yanked it. Um, yeah, I'm with you. No more so, Yankee, my wanky. So, sixteen candles. Thank you. Long so there's on. there's eleven songs that were recorded. A hyena. No one gets those jokes. It's just you guys <laughs> in that shitty show. Okay. You get it. You get it. All right. Careful. Had a Night Ranger song in the in the movie. Rumor, rumors in the air. It wasn't on the soundtrack though. <laughs> unless you get the, unless you get the expanded version that was released on when, CD in the early two thousand. Justin Henry, when the you know, kid puts the headphones back on, gets Sofa City, toots, then you hear the guitar solo. All right, so Damn Yankees, the, the first track on this, you know, and this is on sequence, so I don't know if they actually have, if this was how it was going to actually end up or not. First track is Even Though. Okay. And has never been released okay um second track give nobody nothing again never released don't know anything about it third track was too much on my mind again we don't know anything about that but the fourth track we are the ones that's the one that ended up on jack blades um yeah his first solo album Bada bing. Now, is that? I, I wonder if that's the original recording because, you know, you got Kelly in the background testifying, we are the ones, you know. Well, the end. I would say not because it's got Warren Martini from Rat on there. Uh, he does the guitar solo. Uh, I didn't realize. I forgot about all that. And Colin Blade sings back up. So it's probably... Mm-hmm. A re-recording, but it is written by sure. Jack and Damon Johnson. So that was one of the one of the tracks that was on there. And then after that was "Sunshine of Your Love," which is the Cream cover. That is the one that Kelly Kagi played on and sang. Oh, he sang that song. Yes. So that would have been the song. He sang one, and I think Damon Johnson sang one. Uh, I do not know which one Damon Johnson sang. I do know Kelly Kagi sang Sunshine of Your Love. And I okay. think that was maybe supposed to be the bonus track of the Japan album. I can't remember where I saw that at or if I did. Uh, track six, Mona Lisa. Again, n- we don't know anything about that song. Number seven, Don't Say Goodbye. We don't know anything about that. Track eight is Shine On. Are you going to include me in these texts? Um, it's not. I'm not texting. I'm, I'm looking at the song titles, and I was going over with Andy, and he's like, "What song do we know?" I said, "You know, don't say goodbye. Say it's gonna stay forever." I went, "Oh wait, that's damn Yankees." I mean, that's. 
I said that's the not called, you know, that's high that's enough. That's high enough. That's the remix. Uh, yeah, well, and I was like, it just, I was thinking of, um, don't ask me why from Night Ranger is yeah. what I was thinking. That's what the song was. But for some reason, High Enough came out. And that this was earlier tonight before yeah. we were speaking to you. So there was no text. So I'm just looking like I said, at the song titles that you sent me. So Shine On is on Jack's solo album again. Warren D. Martini is the uh, guitarist. Michael Cardelloni and Tommy Shaw are both on that recording. What I think is weird, I won't say weird but different, is most of the time when stuff was written with Damn Yankees, it was written by Tommy, Jack, and Ted. Basically, there's uh, when we talk about Damn Yankees, we have the Damn Yankees episode, I'll give you my theory on why that was like that. Um, but on all these tracks that we're seeing individually out there, they are listed by who actually wrote them, it looks like. Instead of mm-hmm. we are the ones being Jack, Damon Johnson, Ted Nugent, Tommy Shaw, it's just Jack and Damon. Same with uh, Shine On, it is Jack and Tommy Shaw. So two of the songs off that Damn Yankees album ends up on Jack's solo album. I like Shine On, for the record. It's different. Um, yeah, I, I like I like Jack's solo stuff. I don't love it, but I like it. Yeah. I enjoy it, especially the first one. Track nine. Oh, I like them both. Yeah. Track nine was Yes I Can. Which ended up on the Styx Cycloroma, Cyclorama album. That's your Sammy Davis Jr. On this, it's written by Jack Blades and Tommy Shaw. I'm sorry. It's a spinal tap thing. Remember when he was Bruno Kirby was reading Frank's book, Yes I Can? He goes, Unless you're Sammy Davis Jr. Okay, I apologize. I'm I'm gonna behave. <laughs> Caught me way off guard. <laughs> All right, I don't even know where I was at, man. But anyways, there's you were, you know, there's you were at the SI, the yes, I can. Songs. Some yeah. songs and stuff on there, and they never got released. Which I gotta say, did you listen? Did you listen to that song, Josh? I don't care for that song very much, and I'm not trying to dog on Tommy. I just that song does nothing for me. So it wasn't. I mean, is it? How's the production on that song? I, I haven't heard it. No, it sounds fine. I mean, I went to YouTube and watched it and listened to it. It's just... To me, it's the best song, you know, on the... Out of the four that been re- that was released, it's the best one. You think so? Okay. Yeah, I like I like Shine On out of all the ones that, I, that I've heard. And then track 10 was Damned If You Do. Yeah. That's got to be the Ted song. Yeah. Which is listed as... Nugent Blade Shaw. So it does have that, you know, three of them titled on there. The last one was Don't Stop Dreaming, which, again, we don't know anything about that. But I do think some of the ones that um, were maybe demoed and not used for the album ended up on this as well. The Ted Nugent 2002 release of Crave Man. Because there's a song on here called I Won't Go Away. Written by Ted Nugent and Damon Johnson. I thought there was another one too. There's a song called Crave. Um, written by Ted Nugent and Jack Blades. So some of those tracks may have actually, you know, like some of the stuff they didn't use on the album might have ended up on the uh, of the uh, D- the Damn Yankees. Or might have ended up on the Ted Nugent album. So you can get Four of the eleven tracks, if you want them. But, but we know somewhere out there is a recording of these songs. Yeah, well, Josh has got that picture of the CD, the compilation. So how, so how do we get that, Josh? Well, you talk... I'm sure you're working on it as we speak. Well, the key. How, how long have you been working on it? The, the key would be to ask. This only came out a year ago. This picture. Oh, did it? Yes. Uh, the key would be to ask Andrew McNeese where he got that picture from. Uh, way I understand, it's not his. You know, it ain't like he has it and took the picture. Um, it's someone he knows or something that somehow he's gotten it. I don't know if it hasn't been leaked out in twenty years. I don't know if it'll ever be leaked out. 
you now you say that and eventually stuff you know sure gets gets leaked but who who all has their hands on a copy that's the first question and if all of them don't like it and that's right. probably not going to be you know easily to get a hold of uh jack tommy all of them talk about not wanting it released um john claudner doesn't like it john claudner says the biggest thing the reason why it failed was there's no tommy shell you know tommy mm. tommy came in a little bit at the wow. beginning and end but he said that was the one component that he thought basically maybe killed it was you know not enough tommy shawl on it so it's one of those well, things when, when jack and tommy harmonize together it's a beautiful thing it really is and it's amazing that those two i guess they met be, being damn yankees i i don't know that i've never heard the story about the, their paths crossing any time before that yeah i don't know if if they'd met beforehand i mean i know the story of the damn Yankees getting together yeah. and we'll get into that, you know, in a future episode, but I can't remember. I know Jack had met Ted previously, how much and all that stuff. If they were hunting animals and shit together, I don't know, but, uh, um, yeah, I would love to see some kind of video of them all first getting together. Of course, Tommy and Ted probably bumped the heads the most out of everybody. You know, because I know there was one thing where he was talking about Tommy being a vegetarian and yeah, what have you. Yeah, I mean, th- this is leading into the Damn Yankees episode, but I don't know exactly how long Ted was actually in the studio, too. Yeah. You know, uh, those... But what you do know is a bit... I, 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 we've been getting educated. That's been great. I, I, I don't know all those stories. But, uh, yeah, I mean, with, you know... Ted might not have been as involved with those damn Yankee albums, but he definitely lent his name um, to it, and they were some of the biggest paychecks he ever got. I do know that. So, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just like I said, it's one of those things in Night Ranger sticks damn Yankees history that there's this lost album out there, and I don't know. It's just weird if you know you think if you recorded an album, you'd want people to hear it. And yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know. I mean, it's what? weird. Is a you think as a creative person, you you should be proud of everything you do, but maybe I, I mean, Brent, you listen, you've got the Gene Simmons vault. There's a lot of stuff in that thing that should never probably see the light of day. So, and what you froze up on me, I didn't. And what I said, you have the Gene Simmons vault. I mean, how many of them songs should never yeah, see the light of day? But you put them all on tape because they were just ideas. To see yeah. what they would turn into, no different than Eric jamming mm-hmm. on the internet. Yeah, um, I, I liked his whistle while you worked. By the way, that, that was, was fun. fun. Yeah. Um, the difference. I with, think. Go ahead. Well, the, I want to stay with the vault. The difference with the vault was those were demos, and that's what they were. Yeah. It. The, they were talking about stuff that were was demoed and then taken to the next level. Yeah. That's the oh, difference sure. between that and the vault. You know. So, well, what's interesting about the vault is like um, on there, there's a couple songs that ended up on Ace Frehley's last solo album on Space Spaceman. Sure. That Gene gave him, and but the song is not the song that you're hearing with the lyrics. It's a totally different song with the boom, 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 boom. You know, the bass line. It's it's really cool. So when you hear it, you're like, oh my god, that's not what I thought. Um, now, Josh, I have a question for you. Being that you, I mean, you have. 18,000 CDs behind you. Um, well, you know, he's just... I, I, I'm in a room full of Kiss stuff, and I have some I have some Night Ranger collectible stuff, but not nothing like you do. So, my guess is when you, you know, when you go down the rabbit hole, you go deep. Do you um, have a lot of stick stuff? I mean, is there is there a lot of unreleased stick stuff that gets out there, or is it tight as well? well because, well, you know, uh, we know Night Ranger stuff's tight. We know the damn Yankee stuff's tight. What's so funny, Andy? <laughs> but when you... 
I don't get this. Anyway, uh, I, I'm, I'm missing the joke. But, um, I, I, but, I don't know. I, uh, are we keeping this episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is fine. I, I just, Absolutely. They, they, they will, I, they, everybody will love this, actually, because it's us. <laughs> This is us. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, we're yeah. doing good. I think it's great. I would it's love too much episode. of us. Oh, that's great. But no, how much um, gets out of, of sticks? I really don't know. There's probably more sticks than the Night Ranger. Uh, oh, clearly, yeah. If you're talking demo-wise, I couldn't answer that probably as an expert because I don't follow sticks beyond okay. what's commercially available but i gotcha. do but i do know that Styx released an album 1990 called edge of the century with glenn burtnick mm. which is the album that tommy shaw didn't go back to because of damn yankees they started recording a another a second album with glenn burtnick 92 93 somewhere in there they i think they I don't know if they had a working title, but the album never was done. But that set of demos for that record did find its way out in the collector cir circles. Did it? It's called Son of... I think it's called Son of... I don't know. Uh, Son of... Son of Glenn? No, what the... Uh, Son of Edge, maybe, or something like that, from Edge of the Century. Um, okay. Or something like that. So yes, Was that the album that had "Show Me the Way" on it. Correct. Was okay. Yep. So, but yeah, I mean that's more than Night Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, sticks. There's not much. The cool thing with sticks, though, is you got a lot of cool, like Kiss. You got '70s radio promos and stuff like that, and. I, there's actually a Japanese only album that was released, like a greatest hits. It has just a just an entire Japanese cover directly for Japan. So it's no like, you know, American writing. It's just all Japanese. So and Sticks has some great forty fives and stuff like that. So that's a different type of collectibles, but as for demos and stuff, just that one demo tape. And it's not widely circulated. It's not easy to get. Night Ranger has some stuff. Uh there's a demo tape of you know the four tracks they recorded with Moon Ranger. It's out there. The audio is not good, but it's is it out behind there. you? It is not. <laughs> I have I have a I'm the only person in the world that I know that has it. I have a recording of a couple Night Ranger songs that I know. Someone else has had to have it because I got it from someone back in the yeah. '90s. But whoever that person is, isn't online or isn't put, you know putting it out there. I have a couple recordings of two songs from Night Ranger that no one else has. Wow! So we'll release those down the road when it comes to the right episode. But um, yeah, we're well, going to more of a collector's thing. But there's just not a lot out there. Will this third will this third Damn Yankees album ever be released? I don't think it'll not. probably not officially. You may get it as a uh, a leak. Well, that's what I was wondering. You know, there's nobody really disgruntled in that band like there was in Kiss when Eric Singer supposedly released Carnival of Souls. Mm -hmm. That's what the rumor is that he he wanted everybody everybody to hear it. So that's where that muddy copy came from. I would. I'm still though. I'd be. I would think if you have a song that you may hear, maybe Sunshine of Your Love. Like if they ever would commercially release something as like a single, just mm -hmm. because it's not damn Yankees, you know, it's not like an original song. Sure. So, you know, maybe, you know, release that. But if they were going to do it, they would have done it by now. Yeah. You know, and it might, it, it might actually be phenomenal because now we're going back 20 years. Uh, it's had time to age to where, some of that stuff that might not have sounded good then might sound really good now. I would I would love for somebody to revisit it. I'd just love to be able to hear it. Period. And it may take and make my own decision. And as you also I would say you'd have to have I don't know, Jack, Tommy and Ted all on board. And if one of them aren't are not on board, then it's not going to be released. 
maybe you have to wait till that person's yeah. not in the picture. Who yeah. owns it now? That's the, that's the other question. Who owns it? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's like when I was um, speaking, pardon me, to another band that I sort of know. When I was speaking to the guys at Lit, we were talking about a bunch of unreleased songs that I had. And I said, why don't you just put them on, if you own them, why don't you just go ahead and put them on iTunes? It doesn't cost you anything to do it. And if people buy it, they buy it. If they don't, they don't. But, you know, it's just sitting there. Well, they, I would assume, yeah. whoever owns Portrait and Sony now, which I would assume Sony still would sure. own that. But you, I don't know if, if there's any cells in between there or not. But Sony would own the recordings. So that's another reason why it's probably not you know, on Jack's solo album, it's not what you're hearing on the damn Yankees album because Sony, right. Sony owns that recording of it. Unless Jack's album was on portrait Sony, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but, uh, um, that it was on frontiers, I think. Um, so yeah, that's what you're dealing with is you're dealing with whoever owns that as well. But, if it's not if it's just sitting there and it's not worth anything, they may be able to buy that master if they want it. They may have already done it because yeah, that's maybe the reason why it's not coming out is because they agreed, you know, some type of agreement to. Hey, we want you know because if 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 they don't own the masters, Sony could release that at any time. Sony owns that. Basically, Sony paid them probably to record that and hand it in. And when they hand it in, that's Sony's property. Yeah, it sounds like the only thing they own is a publishing at this point. That's why they can go back and re-record the stuff. Yeah, which it would be, you know, with 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 anything. So, yeah, I mean that that could be a possibility as well as maybe they made an agreement to purchase it back or. You know, these are questions way beyond us. Yeah. yeah. It's something you'd have to ask John Claudner or Jack Blades of who actually owns, you know, that material. And uh, even the demos, the demos could be owned. If there were any demos, they're probably – demos fall under, like, the same umbrella. That's be where we have to get an expert in there. But even if you record a – a demo and it's in that catalog, you know, in that vault with everything else, they kind of still own those, those rights to those. So what's going to be great is when Jack blades finally comes on here <laughs> someday. If that's going to be a great episode to, that's going to be a great question to ask it up, you know, on that, uh, ask that question on that episode, period. God, we'll each have a list of questions. Jack will probably be like, I can't do this, guys, for four hours. Well, uh, I, you know, more or less. Hopefully that, hopefully they all turn into what we got out of Eric. Just, you know, guys yeah. sitting around chatting. Brent will be like, when I'm on my couch looking up at the moon, are you on, oh, your, said, are you on your couch looking up at the uh, moon? Thinking the of moon. me too? The moon? The moon. Looking out the, the window moon. at the moon? Yeah, there's no window. Huh? See, yeah. you've got your own little, yeah. you got your own little fantasy going you're, on. You're out there looking at the moon, somewhere. I'm going to show you the moon. There. I'm going to show you the moon. <laughs> don't you ever watch wow. Fievel? America no, goes I've west. Never seen it. Well, then you never don't get it. it. Oh no, yeah, no. we don't. I've never seen that. Yeah. Um, but I've seen Eddie in the cruisers multiple times. See, Andy always teases me because I don't see a lot of um, popular movies like Top Gun and what have well, you. And what do you always say when I say I haven't seen that? You say shocker. Sh- Shocker. Yeah. Well, I think that's how they may be found, the Eddie Wilson uh, Season in Hell or whatever that record was. Yeah, Season in Hell record was they were, when they were putting those damn Yankees, that damn Yankees record in the vault, they were moving stuff on the like, left. Yeah. And that box showed up and like, holy shit, is that Eddie Wilson's name? And they dug it out. And next thing you know. Season of Hell, the poem written by... Uh, John Rambo. Yeah, look at you. Do we know? Go ahead. Big, brain, big brains on rye. 
Do we know if these master tapes were in that fire as well? Like, I mean, I know it's a different label and what have you, but a lot of a lot of um, places, a lot of bands were stored there. You know, I didn't see anything on Damn Yankees, but Damn Yankees was uh, Sony at this time, so it was just everything owned by Universal. So anything Warner Brothers or Sony, I don't think were included. But did. Didn't Rock Candy Records remix those records? You're, you're, are we, you're, 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 the we're, Damn Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah Yankees. We're, going, we're, going to, we're spilling everything. For no, no, day. no. I'm just going to ask yes. how they sounded. Uh, anything remastered sounds good uh, to me. I don't think Trouble Walking sounded any better than the original. Well, that's more because of Ace was still on it. Um, Ugh, but uh, <laughs> I like Trouble Walking. But, uh, yeah, it's a good album. I won't say it's... It's all right. It's there's a few songs on there that that could be uh, that could be that could be cut. But uh, I just noticed something sitting on your shelf there, Brent. Oh well, yeah. So Josh, is that going to wrap up this episode? Then but, gonna... Rock Candy, yes. Uh, yeah, rock. The first, the best thing about Rock Candy releases are the uh, booklets. The booklets are great. Got great interviews in them and stuff. Maybe not for fifteen bucks, but if you got it, do it. Yeah. So, yeah, wrapping this up, there's four songs out of the 11 from that third Damn Yankees record you can go get. Yes, I Can off of Stick Cyclorama, Shine On off of the 2004 solo album, We Are the Ones off the 2004 solo album, and Damned If You Do off the, I think it's 2001, Ted Nugent Crave Man album. Those are the four. And then you can get possibly two other songs that were written for Damn Yankees on Ted's album. Crave, which was written by Ted and Jack, and I Won't Go Away, written by Ted and Damon Johnson. So, yeah, it would have been cool. It would have been cool if they toured. Imagine going to go see Damn Yankees, and you had Damon Johnson, and you had Kelly Kagey up there. Yeah. And and I'm, yeah I'm trying to, when you were talking about Brother Kane, I was trying to, my first thought was the Four Horsemen. I will, you know, didn't they kind of sound the same, similar? Four uh, Horsemen, or was the Four Horsemen a little bit more grittier? I kind of—I don't even know if I know who the Four Horsemen are. Yeah. Rocket is my business. Business is good. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if you like Brother <laughs> Kane, or, or if you want to hear a good Brother Kane song, go find Full Shine On. It's—it's it's a little modern for that, especially for '95. But I thought it was cool. And if you just want some straight up classic rock type sounding stuff get their first album off from 1993 i saw i saw them open for van halen in 1995 in dayton ohio wow yeah that nice. was, i think it was the only show that they opened for van halen it was kind of a weird little thing that they needed an opener for that show that was the only one they opened is that the gary sharon years that was the last tour with sammy hagar okay yep so sorry i was trying to remember when the the sharon years hit and it had been 98 90, yeah, I totally, yeah. I never even bought the album. Album is a lot like Big Life, you know, it's, it's, it's. I'm just not a Gary Sharon fan, that's why I, I never checked I, it out. I, I like Gary Sharon, I, he's, he was great live, just that album was, you know, you're expecting, just like I said with Big Life, I'm, you know, I throw in. Night Ranger, it's Dawn Patrol, Midnight Madness, you know, something rocking. Yeah. Van Halen, you're throwing, you know, Van Halen 1 or 2 or, you know, From Lawful Carnal Knowledge or something like that. And Van Halen 3 just... Never hit. Yeah, there's some there's some left field stuff. And they gave Eddie the mic for one song, which was a totally bad idea, so... Yeah. Um, same same with giving Tommy Lee the mic. Yeah. Just don't do it. Tommy Lee's a lot hell of a better singer than uh, than Edward. Eddie. But they ki oh. they kissed a, they kissed a lot of Eddie Van Halen ass in '98 for that album came out, saying it's a return, it's a return to the old Van Halen, and everybody gets excited. And I got him like, what the fuck am I listening to? It's like Genesis. Yeah, because the first single sounded like Sammy singing the, the song. The first single was awesome as hell. Without you, I heard yeah, that. But didn't it sound like a little bit like Sammy. I know, don't give a shit. It was great, okay? I was like, this is going to be a great album. and uh, Coming soon, the Van Halen fan page. Yeah. <laughs> well, Van one, Halen. One cool little story. Ooh, yeah, that's it. 
is uh, went and saw Extreme in 95. Get on a print. And before the show, we're in the front. Before the show even starts, I look down. There's a guitar pick at my feet. Pick it up. It's an Extreme guitar pick. So they must have threw it out during sound check. So I had a guitar was pick it, before the band even came on. Uh, was it Nuno's? I can't remember at this point. But uh, And then after the show, it was cooled out. And they weren't going to meet anybody, but there's you know some people back here, and they were going to go through and shake hands with people real quick on their way to the bus. And as their you know, security's pushing them through, and you know I shook Nuno's hand, just reached out to shake Gary's, and the guard pushed him right past me real quick. And uh, Gary Sharon stopped him and said, "Hey, I'm going to shake this guy's hand," and shook my hand. And I just say, hey, "That's kind of cool." So I used to always say, tell people that the Lead singer of Van Halen stopped to make sure that he could shake my hand. <laughs> so, anyways, he yeah. me about being on a couch. Nice play. Yeah, and ever since then, I'm on a couch late at night, thinking of Looking you. At the moon, Looking at the my moon. Nose. I wonder. I'm th- I wonder if his name would. Yay! Could I fit Gary Sharon's name in a Night Ranger logo? I could fit him in my Probably heart. Could. I could fit Gary in my heart. If he could fit in my heart, he could fit in the Night Ranger logo. Well, I know dude. Brent will have that because Brent's not a big Sharon fan. So yeah, I'm not. And that that this is basically you're the inner you coming out right now. So <laughs> this has got to be the worst episode we've ever done. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. All right, so real quick, let's Trust wrap me, it up. They will uh, love any, it. Thank God. Any mu- thank, music suggestions? No, there ain't no fucking new music. I'm skipping all that. <laughs> uh, Thank God your mom is on this page because uh, I'm kicking her off. No, that's half our views of this episode. Any sponsorship we can do? How about Coke Zero, ladies and gentlemen? I saw a Coke commercial today on the internet. It was called Coke Light. Yeah, from another country. All right, well let's wrap this up, everybody, so we can get off here because we are clearly off our rockers. Make sure you share this. This is an awesome episode. Look, we're having fun. Yeah, we're having fun. We yeah. got the gang back together tonight. It was going to be a lighter episode anyway, you know, yeah. with the damn. But I, I do appreciate your um, knowledge on the damn Yankees. Um, yeah, it's stuff on that, Josh, because I, I, I knew a little, but I. I... Well, there's, no, there's it, still so much more educated. to learn. It'd be yeah. nice if we. I thought Damon Johnson. We didn't know what Damon Johnson sang or didn't sing for the longest time. Sure. It, was, it was only within the last couple of years he actually came out and said he sang one song. I thought he had said the title of it, and I guess he didn't, or I just can't find it. But uh, we still don't know the title of his track. But, yeah, there's still, I mean, there's still, what? More to come. Seven tracks off that album that we've never heard or know nothing about. So well, If there's anybody out there that has it, sure. find us. You should have went and bought a house in Santa Monica off of Luke and – he said, "Hey yeah, man, I listen. will I will close on this house if you give me that demo tape." What yeah. was it, Brent? Two years ago, three years ago, we almost moved to Southern California. Yeah, it's about a year and a half. Not yeah. not we. He and he, yeah, he me and, and uh, my lady. Yeah. And then and you Teresa. and then you moved to Nashville when everybody's leaving. Kelly's down there still. No, no, nope, nope, Kelly's gone. He's in Arizona. He's in Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he might have had a pit stop in between there too somewhere. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, some other people that we like. That were in Nash. Tom, Tommy, I think he T- Tommy's may still be in Nashville, but uh, I know some of the others have people started leaving. I don't know why, but maybe it's because it's Nashville. After a while, and they heard you were coming. Hey, real quick before we end this episode, uh, do you want to address the the passing of a country legend that just happened uh, prior to recording this? Charlie Daniels. Yeah, legend. I was a little shocked on that. Uh, that was something, you know, I, I, I regret I've never seen Charlie Daniels live. Um, the man was the master of that fiddle, and we all grew up on Devil Went Down to Georgia. He was a hell of a guitar player. I remember being a kid, the first time I saw Charlie Daniels on TV, and he was playing a Sunburst Les Paul. Yeah. And and I couldn't believe someone else had a, almost an Ace Frehley guitar, and he was yeah. in a country band. I thought that was the coolest thing. I'll never re- I'll never forget that. Josh, have you did you ever get to see him, meet him? No, I've seen a lot of the old country guys. Um, it just got to the point. I don't mind if you're uh, into politics, right? I don't even care if you bring it up. But when it becomes, yeah, right. your focal point. And I mean, John Bon Jovi. 
Well, yeah, but Bon Jovi's. I don't care if you do it off stage. All right. Well, he does it. In, he's doing it in his music now. Like his new yeah. album's called Twenty Twenty. The left right. feels right. And, well, if it's if it's the, if it's the song, I don't care. If you're if it's not the song, and it's in between tracks, and you're talking, then mm. I'm. I'm I agree with you. Start right. tuning out. I mean, Bruce, I agree with that. Bruce Springsteen. Some people don't like Bruce because of his politics, but you go see Bruce. He doesn't not during his show. Now his songs, you know, maybe have a political, you know, view to him, but that's his song. And if if you know, hell, you know what his songs are. If you're you're going there and surprised he's singing a song like that, then that's more on you. But that's the reason yeah. why I can't really go see Ted anymore. As much as I love Ted. It's like, it's just, I saw him, I don't know how many years ago. It was just it, when, you know, Obama was president. It was just, all right, dude, get over it. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I know you don't like him. Okay, that's cool. But I don't need to hear five minutes and, you know, all that no, stuff. No, I don't. I, so, I just want to be preached to about rock and roll when I go. So that's, you know, that's a lot that's of why I uh, didn't just go see charlie daniels in his later years um yeah and i have to admit i had no idea till i mean that, that he was that political in concert i really never knew because i never saw him you know right i didn't know that either but um yeah i just getting back to i i find myself with regret now not seeing some of these legendary artists that are passing away you know i had an opportunity to see glenn campbell and i didn't take it and of course he's gone and i regret that just mm -hmm. i wanted to see a legend play i went and saw willie uh, a year or two years ago just because I, I don't know if i'll ever get a chance to see willie nelson again at least i can say i saw willie nelson and i've seen paul mccartney and yeah i've i'm the same way started making you know seeing some of those guys i could tell you some great stories about charlie leuven if go google him he was uh, i know who that is <laughs> uh and uh i got to talk to him about playing with elvis in the 50s elvis opened for the leuven brothers yeah i got to talk to him on the 30th anniversary of elvis's death it was just wow. cool talking to someone who was there at the time and but uh bobby bear i've gone, went and seen bobby bear and uh Bill Anderson and George Jones and all those guys. I was able to meet Mo Bandy. Yeah. I just went and saw him a year ago, a year or so ago. But Charlie Daniels, if everybody knows, Devil went out, went Devil went down to Georgia. Some other big songs of his, "Uneasy Rider." Yeah, I don't know it, but I've heard a lot of people talking about um, it. Long haired country boy. Um, and In my America. my yeah. personal favorite, if you just want to hear his fiddle playing is go get Marshall Tucker Band and get the track This Old Cowboy. And that has Charlie Daniels all over it. And his fiddle is great in that. So definitely one of those guys that was just an icon, 83 years old, I think, when he, you know, yeah. when he passed yeah. away. And from what I understand, a hell of a guy, you know, just one of those guys that if you were up and coming, you know, he always introduced himself and took care of you. So... And he had a Charlie Daniels Museum down in Nashville for the longest time, right there by the uh, Wild Horse Saloon. I don't know if it's still there anymore, but it was. I, I don't think it is. I've uh, been down there very recently, and and I don't recall seeing it there by the Wild Horse. That's well, so. Weren't you buying a house down there? Yeah. Well, not not in downtown. Okay. <laughs> Rest but assured, like yeah. that's not in my price range. But yeah, he used to have a, uh, a museum there. Like I said, it was right off to the left of the wild horse and you go in and it had all his you know, personal effects and stuff there. But yeah, definitely if, if you, uh, you enjoy some, I won't say classic country cause he is kind of like what you said, Brent with the gold, you know, the gold top Les Paul and, yeah. um, or he's a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. uneasy rider is a lot like, uh, just a lot of folk Arlo Guthrie kind of stuff. And, you get uh, southern uh, long-haired country boys, a lot like Leonard Skinner. So some good stuff. I, I was a fan. All right. Well, rest easy, uh, Mr. Daniels. Why we, well, what else do we want to talk about? we got Van Halen 3, Charlie Daniels. Let's do one more. Man, I'm telling you what, I'm getting whiplash from all these, all these left turns. <laughs> You're talking about people getting political. I heard a story, and I can't remember who it was from, but they went and saw the Pretenders. And Chrissy Hine comes out for the encore. 
And this is when she decides to get political. And she says, anybody out there who eat cows? Well, if you eat meat, get the fuck out of here. I don't want you in here. You know, at the end of the concert. I'm thinking, if I'd been there, like, you should have told me this, I would have never came. <laughs> you know, uh, but now you're telling me to get out on the on on, on your encore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but listen, if I go don't, see the if, if I go see the Pretenders, I expect Chrissy to be pissed off at me for something. So <laughs> I just like, yeah, you know, I had because it you're standing in the middle of the road. That's why yeah. I think she'd be mad at you. So, uh, don't get me wrong, but that's probably true. Uh, the uh, Pretenders are a Ohio band. I went back to Ohio. They are from Akron, yeah. Ohio. Yes. Uh, she was. The rest of the guys were from England. All had heroin problems and were dying. Uh, and... You know, good day, sir. Never, never a Pretenders fan. Brass and Pockets, okay, but... Yeah, they got some good songs. You don't have a Pretenders room? No. That's the other side of the hallway. <laughs> Chrissy Hines Andy, boots? you can piss off. You, you, you ain't getting none <laughs> on this joke. I, I got pissed, nothing. Pissed right off. All right. I'm, I'm pissed off. Yep. I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. But, we need to let this go. Hey, All right. this, fun, this was a fun night, fun conversation. Hey, you know what? Th- yes. I got a feeling this episode is it's going to be. Well. No, it's going to be like the Lost Damn Yankees album. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. It's going to do well. There's going to be a podcast. People like this. There's going to be a podcast someday of people talking about Fans in Motion podcast. Like okay, let's let's talk about their first three episodes and how they changed their operating systems. And like Andy, he wasn't there that episode. I wonder why. And yeah. they say he was moving. You wonder there. And is it true? We heard that there's a missing episode between. They actually recorded an episode between five and six. Yeah. A, between a, Eric this, Levy and Jack oh, Blaze, there's a missing yeah. episode. I, I heard they recorded one about Damn Yankees' third album, but we don't know where it's at. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> This was fun, Josh. Was Andy, yeah, going, yeah. Andy was going solo. I think that's why they, that's the rumor yeah. of the spring. And somewhere, and somewhere out in this big fucking warehouse next to the Ark is yeah. Eddie, Wilson, the Ed, Eddie Wilson's demos, Damn Yankees' third album, and a little fucking you, you, you know, little uh, uh, memory stick with uh, this episode on it. I dare you if I were saying something and I said yes, and this is yes, I can. I can. How the spinal tap wouldn't come into your, especially with this shirt on, you know? I should say, yes, I can if Frank Sinatra says it's okay. Yeah, yeah, that, and I just. Then the window goes up. Yeah. <laughs> and here goes the we window right just, now. We should watch Spinal Tap and just do a commentary on it. Too much well, perspective. What we could do is we could all, all watch it and talk about it at the same time, and then we can cue everybody to tell one exactly to start. Press play. It's like none more blacker. Uh, I've, anyway, um, I've told him once. I've told him a thousand times. It's puppet show, then Spinal Tap. <laughs> spinal Pap. <laughs> we should ask. Well, we should ask Eric to do a Jazz Odyssey. Are we are we doing Stonehenge tonight? <laughs> no, we're not we doing have... bloody Stonehenge. Ah, <laughs> oh, so classic. It's so All right. Classic. So many Everybody, ways. thank you. If you've stayed through to this, thank you immensely. Because yeah, if you like, stayed we through, assume it, you you got. <laughs> Bigger issues than Andy we do. and I had a blast. Josh, I, you tuned out uh, an hour yeah, ago. I, th- I think people are going to really like watching us have a good time together. So, yeah, Listen, yeah I mean, it really, it, when it all comes yeah. down to the end, you know, we, we are uh, just we're having some fun and we're talking about music that we love and learning something from Josh about a band that I, you know, I never knew that much about Damn Yankees, and uh, so I appreciate Josh's knowledge. So, yeah, and if you uh, you want Brent to think about you. Go. On la, his couch, la, 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 send him la, la, la. a private message and a pack la, of smokes. <laughs> All right, we're getting off here. Later. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next time.